Yeah, yeah. Hi everyone, Genthony Z Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Jockstrap album, I Love You, Jennifer B. This is the debut full-length studio album of UK music duo Jockstrap, who dropped one of the weirdest and most exciting EPs of 2020 via Warp Records. That would be Wicked City, where the duo showed off a very progressive and kitchen sink approach to art pop that threw in everything from dance music to hip-hop to glitchy electronics. There was just a handful of wildly different songs on this release, so it made it a little difficult to see where exactly stylistically Jockstrap would land when we heard a release uh, about this size from them. Would they even come through with something that was definable genre-wise? But for I Love You Jennifer B, Taylor and Georgia seem to have settled on a series of very lush, very pretty takes on Baroque pop, art pop, singer-songwriter music as well, laced with all of these odd, quirky, and colorful samples, manipulations, as well as bits of sound play and studio trickery. The songs on this thing showcase a creative and delicate balance between working in a lot of experimental embellishments while also serving the song at the core of the track and not distracting from its beauty. And there is a lot of beauty on this release to be had, especially with Georgia Ellery's very bright, angelic, youthful, and a strong voice with quite a bit of range to it, not to mention the duo's compositional chops with lots of interesting chord changes and ornate arrangements, because even at its weirdest and most cacophonous, there is something very grand and ambitious about what Jennifer B. is doing, which is apparent from the opening track, Neon, where moody guitars and synth chords build a very quiet tension against George's voice until we get this blast of lo-fi drums and guitars that are just roaring away like something off of a Mount Erie record, the droning bass and synth arpeggios eventually getting swallowed in this whooshing manipulation that's kind of destroying the sound quality of the whole track. There's also a chilling refrain on the outro that puts a very grim bow on the song's lyrics, which throw out images of being tired, strung out, emotionally speaking, I imagine, struggling to make it to the next day and sitting there and questioning to yourself, uh, but is it working? From there, we seem to get calls to leave the situation or better the situation with mentions of, I won't do this to myself again, I won't do this again to you or anyone. I love it, but it is one of the roughest moments on the entire record, and not quite as sweet or easygoing as maybe someone uh, new to the duo would have been expecting for any album they're just happening into. Jennifer B. is also a bit of a tough pill to swallow in some respects. Not for a lack of space and color and dynamics, this track actually has that in spades, but there are so many switches, so many changes, so much cacophony, it makes uh, the song a little difficult to translate, I think. There's a cluttered messiness to it that is fun and reminds me a bit of a books album, but maybe going just a little too far, especially with random vocal drops saying things like shifting about in her goddamn crochet pants, staring at God knows what, which I see as playing into the narrative of the track, which uh, <laughs> also touches down on things like uh, being a gamer girl who's playing for you, also uh, a stripper. If I was to read into this track, I I kind of see it as somebody writing out something about maybe using seduction or some kind of manipulation tactic to get something for themselves or get something out of someone. I would say the song Greatest Hits is this record's first true banger. If someone came up to me and asked me like what jockstrap song do I need to listen to to get into the duo, this would be the song I would slide their way immediately. It is beautiful, soaring chorus, excellent vocal performance from Georgia too, endlessly groovy beats, and some new wave nods on the synthesizer plus the rhythmic breakdown on the bridge. I think just about anybody can appreciate that. The whole track sounds like angels having a sexy dance party among the clouds and pearly gates. Then there's the string-kissed What's It All About, which takes the softness and the dreaminess to another level. Lush instrumentation, spotlit vocals. It is romantic, warm, and lovely on all levels. There's also some creative sound play on the production end with the whole mix getting just kind of swallowed up and more bit crushed as it progresses along toward the end. Concrete Over Water is where the duo's progressive pop bona fides really shine. The quaint keys and chords on the intro read like something out of a church hymn. Beautiful, touching, intimate vocals on the front end of the song. Lyrically, Georgia is singing about what seems like lonely nights in the city. Some love connection that was broken at some point. The 
instrumentation escalates in this really grand way, uh, like something out of a Julia Holter or a Kate Bush record with some strange chants, lots of atmosphere, marching snares, squeaky synths. And this is all really in the first leg of the song. From here, we get even more dynamic passages. It's really a whole pop ballad procession with some of my favorite lyrics in 2022 laced into it as well. The song Angst is the quickest hit on the second half of this record at three minutes. We have some twinkling harp melodies that are subtly glitched out here and there. It is a somber and elegant little moment. Very pretty while it's on, but honestly, the most gripping part of the entire track, oddly, is Georgia's surreal lyricism on the back end, combined with uh, this vocal passage from her that is sped up, so she's kind of like singing in double time. There's a lot of interesting ideas being toyed with on this track. I just don't think it builds up a whole lot of momentum like the most effective tracks here, like Deborah, which kicks off with these dystopian distorted layers of noise and synth and bass, which are all just droning into oblivion. We transition past this point into some throbbing and patient synth pop that eventually hits us with these harsh lead melodies and some strings that <laughs> sound like they're lifted from a Bollywood soundtrack. It's catchy, it's colorful, it's out there, it's insane. One of the closest comparisons I think I can make is maybe to The Knife, but even that feels like it's far off. Glasgow is a lovely acoustic ballad with gorgeous strings. Sticks in my head instantly. I trust myself. Like, uh, maybe one of the more conventional moments on the LP. And Lancaster Court, I think, uh, is very evocative, very emotionally tense, especially with these minor chords. The stillness of the progression on this track, accompanied with these really interesting percussion choices, uh, like a really huge timpani hit. I wish it had more of a progression or resolved in a significant way toward the end. That's really kind of my biggest issue with it. It just kind of builds up a lot of, of stiffness and uh, an agita without really kind of letting much of it go. So not my favorite moment on the LP and a very uh, weird transition point into the closing track, 50-50, which uh, sounds like nothing else on the album and is uh, a very strange, glitchy piece of dance pop, IDM. Some break beats are worked into there as well. Lots of uh, very esoteric and somewhat cheeky vocal samples. I gotta go, gotta think about that. She's 50-50! It's honestly a banger. It is a true blue banger, but again, uh, it really sticks out like a sore thumb in this track list, and I, I, I don't know, I was expecting the duo to play a little bit more in this arena on the rest of this record in some way. And I don't know what to say about this album as an overall experience at this point. Even with having heard the whole thing, acclimated myself to it, uh, enjoyed it on the whole. I love the vast majority of the songs on this record. I really, truly do. But, like, do they come together as a really cohesive you know, piece or idea or something, not really in a way the tracks really kind of run together uh, like a compilation. The most purposeful move in this track list, again, is I think uh, throwing this <laughs> very catchy, very kind of dancey and glitchy electronic song on the back so it doesn't kind of ruin the, the flow of the, the more ballad type tracks earlier. But yeah, I mean, look, uh, Jockstrap are bringing great performances, uh, great lyrics, great songs, great production creative on all fronts, but I guess my biggest complaints at this point is we do have a few songs that pale in comparison to others, and there's not a firm idea as to what the sonic boundaries are of Jockstrap at this point. Like, could they have reined it in and done a more straightforward Baroque pop or art pop style album? Yes, but I probably would not have been as pleased with that. And the more experimental, noisy, electronic, and synthetic bits that are in the mix, while I like that they were there, sometimes I do wish they played a more significant role. Still though, feeling a light to decent and eight on this album, Tran. Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Jockstrap, forever.